Meet Philippe. He's a local dentist in a small French village. Comme ça, les gens entendront pas dans la salle d'attente. <laughs> D'accord. He has reliable old friends, including rope makers, who share his passion for nature. <coughs> Especially mushrooms. Hey! J'ai mon champignon, euh, j'ai mon champignon. <laughs> Philippe has always admired the novels of Georges Sand and the music of Chopin. And it turns out he may have an unusual link with the musical maestro himself, his teeth. A piece of paper was written beside uh, the teeth and it was noticed Chopin's teeth. With 2010 being the 200th anniversary of Chopin's birth, Philippe is determined to find out the truth was his great-great-grandfather, Chopin's dentist. Yes. Thank you yes. very much. Nice, very nice to meet you. Me. You could, by analysing the teeth, perhaps retrieve some DNA. And his journey takes him to England's south coast to be reunited <laughs> with his long-lost oh, past. Oh. I see you again. I know he <laughs> is fantastic. <laughs> In the region of Berry in central France, there is a village called Ardente, where Philippe lives and runs a dental practice with his supportive wife, Isabel. Donc je suis comme ça. Non, non, je c'est comme ça. La, la peur du dentiste, donc ça existe. Elle m'a conseillé son charmant dentiste. Elle a pas peur. Non, voilà. Euh, Philippe, non, mais c'est le dentiste qui fait peur, parce que je sais que Philippe est très... Il fait pas mal, il est très doux, il est très attentionné et tout ça. Mais je ne contrôle pas. Ça relaxe. Et... D'habitude, je, je passe de la musique anglaise, Mais mon, mon, mon ordinateur là, et mon lecteur est en panne. I wanted to be a dentist because I am very shy. <laughs> Lots of friends want to be dentists because when you have patients, they don't have to speak. Because when you open your mouth, you can't say a word. I prefer to talk with my patient and I notice most of people need to talk. We well, are in a modern life where you don't know your neighbor, you don't tell him, hello, how are you? You, you don't know if he's dead. We live like a stranger. He loves his work, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, he can't help him. Especially what he loves is to be able to talk with his patients. He consacres, I would say, he consacres plus de temps to talk with his patients <rire> Qu'aller soigner. Bon, ça, je rigole, je ris. Mais euh, bon, gros, bon, mais c'est un peu ça, c'est un peu Philippe. Mais lui, il aime discuter, donc il discute. A lady once, once time told me when she, she was at her job, told her friend, I go to relax myself. Where do you go? I go to my dentist. Now you are a strange woman. C'est pas toujours évident d'aller chez un dentiste. Hein. Qui aime le dentiste je, je, je vois pas qui. Hein. Mais avec lui, euh, il est très. Euh, tout de suite, on est très à l'aise. C'est un, un monsieur très charmant avec qui on peut parler. Et euh, vraiment formidable. Hein. Là, je suis très contente de l'avoir rencontré. Quoi. But some patients get rather more than they bargained for. Oh là là, dis donc. Teeth passed down from his great great grandfather. A piece of paper was written beside the teeth and it was notice Chopin's teeth. 
So I want to find the truth. Is it or is it is not it? Chopin's dentist. These teeth are molar. This molar is the last one at the back of the mouth. And here we call this dent de sagesse because they grow when you are 20, 21, and you can have troubles even when you are 40. So maybe if these teeth are Chopin's teeth, maybe he had trouble when he was at Nohant with his uh, mother. Ardent is not far from Nohant, the ancestral home of the great writer Georges Sand, who lived there with Chopin for nearly 10 years, from 1838. My great-grandfather, he could have met George Sand's doctor when Chopin lived in Nohant. As well as the teeth, Philippe's great-great-grandfather left some old dentist tools. And these have pride of place in the living room. This one used to be to pull out teeth. And you could change to pull out another tooth. You take this one out and you choose the right one, such this one. Oh dear. And you put your teeth like my finger and you turn it off. It's a mirror, an old mirror to look at inside the mouse. This tool could have been used to pull out Chopin's teeth because we use this uh, tool at the beginning of the 19th century. And I will show you with uh, Chopin's teeth. They introduce this part between the two teeth and move it like this and the tooth slowly goes up. I keep all my old tools and these boxes inside the cabinet because it's a treasure for me. It's very strange because on this box you can see St. George killing the dragon. And St. George belongs to England and I am in love in England. And why did I get these boxes? It was my destiny. Or it was these boxes destiny. Looking around his home, it's clear that Philippe is infatuated with England. I am all French and half English, yes. In my surgery, there is the Union Jack. My car, I have English stickers. I eat English food, bacon. I drink only tea <laughs> with milk. <laughs> England is inside in my body. And when I am in England, I am at home. Too much is too much. <laughs> no, me, he, he loves England, so... Uh, me, uh, il aime bien, il a bien discuté. Oui, non, non, ça tout à fait. Mais c'est vrai qu'en parler sans arrêt et tout ça, ça devient uh, un peu difficile à, à supporter. Mais c'est le plaisir de Philippe. Bon, eh ben, c'est son plaisir, c'est son plaisir. Another of his great passions in life is mushroom picking, which he likes to talk about to his patients. Once time, it was my last patient, and we were talk and talk and talk, and one hour later at least, we saw a car parked just in front of my surgery, and it was uh, his wife who came because uh, she was very worried. Her husband did not come back as soon as she could sing, and he told her, uh, I'm sorry, darling, but uh, we were talking with Philippe uh, about mushrooms. One of Philippe's best friends, Robert, loves his mushrooms too, and he also makes ornaments out of vegetables. Salut, Robert! Salut, Comment Philippe! Comment ça va, et toi? Bien, bien, bien. T'as bien dormi? Très bien. Les yeux sont verts? Impeccable. Je vais au pouvoir aller jouer aux champignons. Ok, ben, je, prends, je prends le panier. Allez, attends, je sais pas. Attends, oui. Euh... Attends, oh, t'as un trou à ton panier là. Il va falloir que tu mettes un journal. Parce non, que mais sinon, on, ça va, on, pas on le faire. va trouver des gros, gros, gros champignons. Tu crois Ouais, ouais, tu vois. Isabelle, on part. Isabelle never comes with me. Because she wants to sleep. She doesn't want to get up very early. Tiens, regarde. 
J'ai pris le couteau pour les champignons. And for me, life belongs to people who get up early because you can try to do all what you want. Mais aussi, mais moi c'est spécial. Ah, exact. Ouais, mais toi tu peux les laver. Ouais. We come mushrooms every Sunday with rubber. As soon as the sun gets up, we go to the forest. It's a pleasure. When you're in the forest, you can listen birds, you can listen frogs. You have some lovely noises, and you are in peace. It's extraordinary. It's wonderful. Your brain flies in the sky. Even if it rains, or it doesn't matter. We like looking for mushrooms. It's like a drug. It's a very, very strong hobby. And Robert seems to have a sixth sense when it comes to hunting the mushroom. It's the same in English. Uh, it's called bolet orangé because his hat is uh, brown red. Comestible. Yes, we can eat. Peigné. So tonight. Ouais, Philippe aussi, c'est un passionné de l'Angleterre, mais c'est un inconditionnel. Les Anglais, et on, on entend parler que de l'Angleterre chez lui. Hein. C'est incroyable de voir ça. Je ne sais pas ce, qu -ce que, quel est ce pays il peut avoir de. de d'attirant, mais moi, c'est formule, c est, c est... il a même les coussins anglais dans sa voiture, c'est pour dire, hein, c'est bien hein, quand même, hein. ça vous pouvez être fier de lui, c'est un, un ambassadeur euh, pour l'Angleterre en France, hein, franchement. <rire> Entre les, entre les arbres. Philippe, ça fait 30 ans que je le connais, mais il est fou. Il, il m'a tout fait. J'ai été à son mariage. Bon, euh, j'ai connu Isabelle, elle était enceinte, mais ils n'étaient pas encore mariés. Ils avaient déjà fauté avant. Hein. Ah, c'est un malin, celui-là. Hein. Hey j'ai mon champignon, euh, j'ai mon champignon. C'est le même. Attends, faut le nettoyer. Ouais. Yes. Allez, We got some uh, some mushrooms such as uh, bolet orangé. Bolet orangé because top of that is red. And when you cut this mushroom, it becomes black, like uh, ink. And yes, of course. Oh, my friends. He's very shy, he does not dare to, to talk. It's, it's blue, blue, black, uh, violet inside. Like when I cut uh, the feet. And some people don't want to eat these mushrooms because of the color. Because they're afraid it's a danger, but it's not a danger. When you walk only one hour in the forest, it's like if you were on holidays a fortnight. It's, it's fabulous. J'ai trouvé des champignons. Oh, bah purée. Deux 
C'est tout Bah je suis désolée, mais je fais ce que je peux. Bah, dis donc, pourtant t'es parti longtemps. Mais c'est tout ce que tu me donnes. Ah c'est tout ce que t'as ramassé. Hein? Oui, mais j'ai ah, marché deux heures dans la forêt pour chercher Oui, mais moi j'ai cuit. Attention, ma J'ai cuit, maman. pas deux heures, mais j'ai cuit. Moi, je te fais un gros bisou. Mmh. <rire> Merci. Un petit peu à moi. Mmh. Oh bon, mon choco. Mmh. Tu les as ramassés. Bon, hein? Non, c'est bon. Mmh. So how did Isabel meet this quirky dentist? Oh, ouf. Très très longtemps, à Ardente, chez ses parents, parce que mon grand-père avait une maison à Ardente, et donc euh, ses parents avaient une maison, sa grand-mère aussi avait une maison, donc, euh, donc on s'est rencontrés comme ça. Et puis, euh, ben, au début, euh, bon, j'avais pas franchement euh, d'attirance pour lui, Et puis petit à petit, eh ben voilà, ça s'est fait. She ignored me. I was in love with, with her, but she did not notice. Never mind that when I went to Great Britain to practice my English, I bought a poster for a poster on which you could read Isabelle Cosson reward for ten thousand dollars, like murder, and we have still this poster in our bedroom. Philippe is now the fifth generation of his family to have lived in Ardente since the early 19th century, and he firmly believes fate brought him home. I came to Ardente 27 years ago, and uh, a voice told me, go leave Paris and go to work to your country, where your great-great-grandfather was. I don't know why. I say it's, it's a voice, but uh, I think we don't choose our life. Life drives you what you have to do. Life is like a train. We are on a railway, and we, you, we can't leave this uh, railway. It's my idea. I know some, a lot of people think I am mad. But uh, I prefer to be mad and happy than uh, the opposite. Uh, the first time I saw the name of Ardent, it means for me, Ardent, you can listen art, and in French, dent, it's French word, and in English, it's teeth. So we called Ardent, art of teeth. Just a short walk down the road lived his great-great-grandfather, Julien, who was a doctor. In those days, there was no dentist uh, in the small villages, only in town. So a doctor in those days could be a dentist, could be a vet, could be a chemist, could be a surgeon. This church is just across the road from my great-great-grandfather's house. I can imagine my great-grandfather driving his horses to go and visit uh, his patient basic to farms and during the night it was uh, quite dangerous because there were wolves in the forest of Ardent. The last one which have been seen in the forest was at the end of the 19th century. Philippe's great-grandfather René wrote about his father, Julien, in his diary. Il faisait ses tournées à cheval, soignant et conduisant lui-même sa monture au champ. Il n'eut jamais de domestique de toute sa vie. Il s'adonna donc à étudier les paysans et à leur plaire. Il s'aperçut vite que la première condition était de les soigner économiquement. Comme c'était un homme profondément juste et honnête, ennemi de toute exploitation, ménageant l'argent de ses malades comme si c'était le sien propre, il ne tarda pas à gagner la confiance de toute la région. When I read these uh, lines, I feel like my grand-granddad was. I don't want to make money. Only when he go and visit a patient, if they could not pay him, or they did not have enough money, they could give him eggs or chicken. And if they could not, they could not it doesn't matter. He was happy because he could help uh, others.
I am driving to Nohant and I could imagine Georges Sonnet Chopin going from Ardon to Nohant by carriage. Chopin and Georges Sand played out their love affair between 1838 and 1847. She's buried at Nantes alongside her children, Maurice and Solange. Georges Sand wrote a lot of novels here because she was in love with Chopin. Chopin wrote most of his music at Nohant during this love affair. When Georges Sand met Chopin at Franz Liszt, she was surprised because Chopin had a feminine face and Chopin was surprised because uh, Georges Sand looked like a man. She dressed trousers, she was smoking pipe, and uh, she was very in advance of, of, at this time. And uh, she took care of Chopin because he had a very, very delicate health. Georges Sand built a room uh, for Chopin. Like this he could play piano without noise. And on the double door, she put a blue velvet uh, curtain to stop noise. And as uh, she looked after uh, Chopin, she had her own workroom just beside Chopin's room. As soon as Chopin left Nohant, two years after he died, and uh, when he died, he died of tuberculosis. When he was young, he was uh, 39 years old. Twenty ten marks the bicentenary of Chopin's birth. The great romantic composer has left behind another personal legacy, besides possibly his teeth. Inside uh, there is puppet, which have been made by uh, Georges Sanson Maurice. And Georges Sand had many friends, writers, musicians who came for dinner at Noah. And after dinner, Maurice asked her mom if he could cut with scissors some hairs from uh, the guests, and he used these hairs to, for his uh, puppets. So when you visit uh, Noah, you could see uh, Chopin's hair, or Musset hair, French writer, Leeds uh, hair, and so on. One of Philippe's favorite novels by Georges Sand is Indiana. Indiana was Georges Sand's first successful novel in 1832. She wrote it before she met Chopin. It's about a young woman, Indiana, who is married to a much older man who she does not love. She falls in love with her neighbor, who is a terrible womanizer, and he breaks her heart. Je vous aurais porté dans mes bras pour empêcher vos pieds de se blesser. Je les aurais réchauffés de mon haleine. Je vous aurais appuyé contre mon cœur pour vous préserver de souffrir. J'aurais donné tout mon sang pour réparer le vôtre et Si vous aviez perdu le sommeil avec moi, j'aurais passé la nuit à vous dire de douces paroles, à vous sourire pour vous rendre le courage, tout en pleurant de vous voir souffrir. Quand le sommeil serait venu se glisser sur vos paupières de soie, à genoux, près de votre lit, j'aurais veillé sur vous. J'aurais forcé l'air à vous caresser légèrement, les songes dorés à vous jeter des fleurs, J'aurais baisé sans bruit les tresses de vos cheveux. J'aurais compté avec volupté les palpitations de votre sein. Et, à votre réveil, Indiana, vous m'eussiez trouvé là, à vos pieds, vous gardant en maître jaloux, vous servant en esclave, épiant votre premier sourire, m'emparant de votre première pensée, de votre premier regard, de votre premier baiser. It's so romantic, and I can imagine George Sand walking through our garden and behind me listening to Chopin playing piano. 
I am a romantic person. I like birds, I like listening animals in the forest. I come to the woods in Beris. I come to walk like uh, Georges Sand and uh, Chopin did it. And in, in the forest in, in Beris, you can find some pools. Georges Sand wrote a novel about a uh, pool, which was called The Devil's Pool. There is a legend about this pool. If you go into the forest, if you lose your way, you will never find the way to go out the forest. So don't go inside the forest as soon as the dark is coming. C'est le temps des bruits insolites et mystérieux dans la campagne. Les grues émigrantes passent dans des régions où en plein jour l'œil les distingue à peine. La nuit, on les entend seulement et ces voix rauques et gémissantes, perdues dans les nuages, semblent l'appel et l'adieu d'âmes tourmentées qui s'efforcent de trouver le chemin du ciel et qu'une invisible fatalité porte force à planer non loin de la terre autour de la demeure des hommes. Today is Philippe's birthday and Isabelle is out shopping for a party tonight. Bonne fin de journée. Merci. À demain. Au revoir. Back home, Philippe has some news that may help prove his theory about the dental relics. A friend of mine knows a forensic odontologist in England, and I would like to meet him and show my teeth, which could belong to Chopin or not. Oh, les dents de Chopin. Alors là, j'en suis. Ben, je suis sceptique un peu, hein. Je... c'est possible, c'est pas impossible. Bon, tellement de choses bizarres, hein. euh, je sais pas, parce que bon, sa famille, c'est une vieille famille euh, de, de, du coin, donc il est possible que ses ancêtres ont, aient pu récupérer une dent qui appartienne à Chopin. In a couple of days, Philippe will travel to England. The last time he went there, he was in his teens, and he stayed with John and Corinne Webb in Teddington while studying English. When you met Corinne, you can't forget her. If, no, Corinne is, uh, I would say, it's my English, she is my English mum. I never forgot her. C'est comme ça qu'il les a connus, et donc il a été passé uh, plusieurs années, et puis même à Noël. Four months ago, I wrote a letter one of my dreams was to be in touch with them now. I sent my letter to Tellington because I never forgot uh, their address. It was like a bottle I, I uh, threw to the channel. But John and Corrine have long since moved, so the letter Philippe sent earlier this year was forwarded to two more addresses before finally arriving at their latest residence in Worthing. West Sussex. But today, Philippe is in for a pleasant surprise. Oh, I got a letter from England. I got a letter from them, and they come from, they live now, uh, I can read, Worthing. Worthing, West Sussex. Dear Philippe, how nice to hear from you. Corinne and I have such very pleasant memories of your stay with us in Teddington. It's true, when you were a student. I will give, we will give you, it's very difficult to read, John. We never forgot you, so please ring us. We will be very happy to see you again. 
It's fantastic. It's Christmas Day today. Yes, it was my surgery and I come. The last time he saw them yes. was okay. when he was 19. Okay. I kiss you. And I am very excited. I think we we'll try, you know, for on Christmas Day, when children are waiting for opening uh, their gift, I am uh, like this child. Hi. For Philippe's birthday, Isabelle is making her speciality, a potato galette, a traditional French savoury dish. Mais c'est très facile à faire, très facile. Un petit peu de temps, surtout pour écraser les pommes de terre. Et après, l'arrière arrière grand père. Euh, donc euh, oui, donc euh, la femme de l'arrière arrière grand père. Qui a, qui a donné la recette de la galette aux pommes de terre. Aïe. Pour l'anniversaire de Philippe. <rire> Naturellement. Parce que je ne cuisine pas beaucoup, mais pour un anniversaire, je cuisine. Donc c'est pour l'anniversaire de Philippe. Buy a present for Philippe? Oh, I forget. Oui. Mon Dieu, j'ai oublié. Non, mais c'est tout mon amour. Tout. Un, un gros bisou. Un gros bisou et puis c'est bon. <rire> Fromage frais. C'est pas. Ce ne sont pas des yaourts, mais, euh, mais je ne sais pas comment on dit en anglais des petits suisses. Puis après, je vais mettre un petit peu de crème fraîche. Et voilà. Et après, on va pouvoir manger. <laughs> Philippe, bon anniversaire! Once Robert arrives, the party is in full flow, and even Philippe's dog can't contain his excitement. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you, Philippe! Happy birthday to you! Merci. Et tu vois, on n'a pas fait en français, hein Non. Et on en anglais. Et on a même pas Tout qu'on était, hein Tête de nœud. <rire> Et voilà la galette aux pommes de terre pour mon petit mari adoré. Non, 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 non. <rire> <rire> mais non, attends, faut s'amuser dans la vie. Euh, euh, merde. Oui, non, mais moi, oui, ça. Euh, oui, pas de tu vois pas de blanc. Ah non, 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 je peux pas. Ah ben alors, si tu veux ah, me retrouver sur la table, ah, euh, c'est bon. Bon, Robert, tu veux de l'eau du. <rire> de l'eau Mais il est fou, tu Il est le coca. Mais il est dans. Ben, non, non, sûrement pas, non Ah ben certainement pas, j'ai pas envie de mourir, hein non mais il est fou, il est malade. Non, 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 non. Je veux pas mourir en attendant, mais il est malade celui-là. Ça fait du rosé. White water. Oh, oui, comme tu dis. C'est pas du white water. Du white water, oui. Allez, tiens, c'est un peu dans ma cocotte. Merci beaucoup. Oh, bah tiens, voilà. Santé. Oh là, ça, ça, oh, ça c'est bon. Oui, il est encore un peu jeune. Oui, mais bon, même jeune, on va le voir quand même. Il est fruité. Ah ouais, il est fruité. Ah ouais. Ouais. Yeah. Oh là là Je crois que ça. Mais non, tu pas dessus Mais non <rire> Before Philippe's departure for the UK, he sets off to get souvenirs of Ardente for Corinne. This morning we are going to see uh, rope makers. Guy, the rope maker, and Daniel make ropes and uh, Guy uh, has a very very old machine to make his rope to keep the local history of Ardent. Bonjour Robert. Bonjour. 
Bonjour monsieur. <rire> Attends pas, tire pas trop fort. Sauvage. They make crops for dogs, for horses. Faire l'accord de... Là, c'est-à-dire que là, on, à l'heure actuelle, on travaille sur deux, deux ficelles. Oui. Et on va arrêter de tourner, là, et après, on va travailler sur quatre. Et la finition, après, là, notre finition, ça va se faire avec cet appareil. Ça s'appelle un fondoir, qui vient et qui date de 1931. Vous voyez le, le truc ici, là. D'accord. Fabrication. And Philippe's mushroom-picking pal, Robert, is helping them out today, as the machine requires three people. I met Robert 30 years ago. He was my first patient when I work at uh, Paris. And we had a lot of feelings with, uh, with Robert. So when we came on holiday to Ardent, Robert and his children came and see us. And it's not only the equipment that's traditional. When uh, George Sand lived at Noir, you could see people who made ropes and they were dressed exactly like they are today. Petit gilet qu'on prenait pour habiller et les deux bretelles pour tenir notre pantalon. Plus on a le béret, ça c'est berrichant. Dans, dans le temps on avait les sabots de bois aussi, mais les sabots c'est pas commode à porter donc on a, on a des chaussures. Parce que les sabots c'est déjà plus lourd et plus c'est pas à la pointure. C'est pas évident, surtout pour marcher, pour faire le travail que... Parce qu'il faut marcher déjà dans la journée. On fait déjà des kilomètres pour euh, le tressage de cordes. But Guy's talents don't end there. He's also something of a Dr. Doolittle. La perdrie C'est une perdrie rouge Remembering John and Corinne love their dogs, Philippe's taking them a present. Et est-ce que vous pourriez me faire euh, deux de, de laisses de la sorte pour leur chien Oui. Mais pas si c'est un gros chien aussi. Oh, c'est un petit chien. C'est un, un petit chien. Comme, euh, comme un épagnol. The local butchers. And this is Philippe's last stop before he sets off on the big journey. Bonjour, Monsieur Rexel. Bonjour, Monsieur Rexel. Bonjour, Madame. Ça va bien Ça va. Euh, je pars en Angleterre ce soir. Oui. Est-ce qu'il vous resterait ou est-ce que vous avez quelque chose de spécifique de, Un bérichon. produit berrichon. Du pâté berrichon. Le pâté de Pâques Le pâté de Pâques. Vous en avez un Oui, j'en ai ah un. Bah vous, me le, vous me le mettez Pas de problème. Voilà. Voilà, c'est parfait. Très bien. Parfait, parfait. Tout du bon fait. pâté de Pâques. Voilà, du pâté de Pâques artisanal. Du vrai. Avec de la vraie chair à saucisse. <rire> voilà. voilà. Bonne journée. Merci, Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. Au revoir. Merci. Bonne journée. Merci. Au revoir. Now all that's left is a last minute pack for the UK. Okay, but Isabelle is wondering where Philippe's loyalties really lie. I understand. Je comprends qu'il aime l'Angleterre. Euh, bon, mais... Euh... Ça passe devant beaucoup de choses. Angleterre, first. After me. After boys. <laughs> After French. <laughs> People. Is it bien? She's lying. No. No. no, no, no. C'est la vérité. Lie. No, It's that's true. the truth. Philippe is now on the journey to find out if the four teeth do belong to Chopin and to meet the long-lost English friends he hasn't seen for nearly 40 years.
Dr. Philippe. Yes, yeah, Dr. Yeah, Philippe. Ron, Ron Foden. Yes. Thank you yeah, very much. Nice, very nice to meet you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I think oh, you've got some things with you. Have a, have a seat there and uh, have a chat. I brought this from France for you. Foie gras. Very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's got to go down That's very well. And Thank if you. you like, oh. you can come and visit us. I will show you where, where you can buy this one. That's very kind. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. And, a um, friend of mine gave me your address because, uh, as I told you, I live in Ardent and I am a French dentist. Right, yes. Well, yeah. And uh, my great grandfather was a doctor at Ardent. He, worked, he lived in early in the 19th and uh, he was a doctor and dentist. And uh, an uncle gave me his uh, tool, uh, dental tools. Okay. And with these dental tools, I found four teeth. He could have uh, met uh, Chopin. Right. That's yeah. why I know if you could help me and explain me uh, how we can date. And I brought with me is uh, my great great grandfather tools. Good lord. Oh, well, I've only ever seen these in um, in the museum, such as uh, in London, the British Dental Association. They've got a collection, but um, I may be wrong, but I think that was what was called a. A pelican, I think it was used as a, a kind yes. of wrench for extracting yeah. teeth. Gosh, and all in the days before anaesthetic as well. So, <laughs> these teeth, I would like to know if you could help me. Uh... But these look like um, they look like a collection of third molar teeth. You could, you could say this was a, these are third molars from a, an individual where the roots have completely formed, so they're yeah. over. They're not a young yeah. person, they're, they're an older individual. I mean, teeth are very durable um, objects because if these are, in, uh, t you know, teeth from Frederick Chopin, you could, by analysing the, the teeth, um, perhaps retrieve some DNA. From um, the pulp? Uh, from the pulp, yes, yeah. because these are, uh, teeth are perfect little capsules for preserving um, DNA. They, they, you know, the living tissue uh, would have had mm. um, living cells with nuclei, so the DNA, um, in theory, could still be recoverable from the, from the tooth, and it yeah. has, been, has been done from quite ancient um, teeth but it is quite a destructive process to, to okay. extract the DNA. If you could get um, a DNA profile you know, then you've got a, a match that you can use but you would then have to have uh, some proven DNA mm. from, the, from the individual and that would be hard to, to do. Just as, a, as an interesting bit of research because when I when I was told you were coming uh, I sort of had a, had a look around and the internet is a wonderful <laughs> resource um, but uh, I believe when Chopin died um, he's, he was buried in the Père Lachaise cemetery in, yeah. in uh, Paris, Paris yeah. and his sister or a relative um, took his heart back to Poland um, preserved in uh, Cognac I think yes and uh, it's now in um, a church I think in Warsaw um, yes, in, a, in a little sh shrine or, or whatever, you know, in a chapel or, or whatever. Um, and a few years ago, I did, uh, again, just, just researching some of the background, there was a group of scientists in Poland who had a theory that um, Chopin, who was uh, thought to have died of tuberculosis, um, may in fact have suffered from a genetic disorder, cystic fibrosis, which is a chronic genetic mm. uh, um, condition uh, with congestion of lungs and, and causes um, you know premature death and there was evidence that some others of, of his family died uh, of quite young well it may have been tuberculosis as well but on the other hand they had a theory it might have been cystic fibrosis and they could prove that by obtaining uh, some DNA and, and analyzing the genetics to see if he carried a gene for this particular uh, ailment um, and he's I think the scientists involved sought permission to to uh, have a to uh, examine the heart and perhaps to see if they could retrieve a DNA sample which would answer their question. Um, the Polish authorities refused that request and I think, um, you know, it's highly unlikely that uh, with the reverence that he's held in that, that any kind of interference would be, would be countenance. But um, that would be the only, <laughs> only hope, I think, of getting a DNA sample unless... Some... It just crossed my mind that if you did manage to get a DNA sample from these teeth, and uh, if you approach the scientists in um, Poland who had their theory about um, 
uh, cystic fibrosis, they may want to have a look and see if that uh, that's a feature of, of the oh. DNA from there. After I met Dr. Fulden, I think I need time to to have, to have a decision. But my next plan, I say, dear Corinne and dear John. After I will see. I have white hair. Oh yes, but I mean that's yeah. a little thatch on the top, but not to worry. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> lovely. Oh, there, yes. Well, well, well. So after all this time. Yes. yes. And you found our address. How many all right? years? It must be. Oh, how many oh, years? I can't remember. Must be. But time goes on. Yeah. It does. But it must the, be thirty odd years. I can't tell you. Can't. Yes. But now. I see you again. I know it is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never forgot you. We didn't forget you. And when we got your letter, oh, it was a miracle. It was just lovely. Yes. But I could not forget you too. Oh. Pate Berichon. Oh, yes. Eat this uh, pate at Easter. At Easter. Ah, Easter. A local oh, speciality. Lovely, yes. Oh. Well, how charming. Thank you. Mm. And, oh, that's thank it. you so much. And kiss, kiss, It's uh, Isabelle, my wife. Mm. Yes. Oh. It's a galette of pommes de terre. It's a oh. family recipe. Oh, bless her. Delightful. That's lovely. Thank you so much. A friend much, of yes. mine in Ardent make a uh, rope. Uh -huh. Oh, isn't that pretty? That is and so pretty. I could not remember. Oh, you are, maybe you can use it for... Oh, yes, that is lovely. The, Thank you very much. You could use it as curtain ties, couldn't you? Um, unfortunately, we haven't got a dog, but I shall, keep, I shall find a use for this. Okay. Yes. Don't worry. I'm doing a breakfast which I remember Philippe absolutely, he absolutely adored English breakfasts. And um, so I'm doing it and he's going to have it today before we go to the pier. We're going to the pier because I think it's so typically English and uh, he's probably never been on a pier before. I'm not sure, but I don't think he has. He was 17 when he first came here and uh, he was one of several students that we had, but, but he, did, he did stand out from the rest, he was, there was no doubt about that. He enjoyed uh, the social part of being uh, in England uh, for his period of study so much that uh, he was keen to come back uh, at other times and so it was arranged for him to stay with us at Brighton one Christmas and he, he found this a, a most enjoyable experience. But I remember on Christmas, I think it was Christmas Eve, it was snowing, it was really heavy snow too, and we slid to church. <laughs> it was really quite funny. There was one incident that I will always remember. We knew we had a German boy coming and he was a very nice boy in fact, but we arranged to take him, or at least the, the, they, the children, arranged to take him to a film. And I had already said, whatever you do, don't mention the war. <laughs> Long before <laughs> it was on 40 towers. And the next thing, um, he arrived, and they looked at all the films that were available, 
and every darn film that week was a war film. Every single one. That's not terribly good. Philippe, breakfast is ready. Oh my goodness me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Where did you get that? Where did you get I bought this in Chateau. Mm. You bought it in France? Yes, did you? Yes, yes, I had no time to buy it. That is yes. amazing. Well, but, you know, I am 50 French, 50 English, so. <laughs> That's right. Mm. You English side. Yes. French side. Yes. <laughs> So, well, you'll certainly stand out in a crowd. Even in England, you will stand out in a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly right for the next Wembley International. Your favourite oh, breakfast, oh, Monsieur. Thank you. <laughs> it's a flashback for me. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It would be like ah. a flashback because. Yeah. This was, a, a, you absolutely adored this breakfast, yes. always. You remember, every day I had to do a uh, uh, written uh, paper. Oh, that's right. You I had, had to, to do find five items. Idioms, and every idioms. day, yes. And it rains, cats, cats and, and dogs. dogs. That's right. <laughs> and, and ever I since, you always said, it rains, cats and dogs. Yes, you, you liked that. You yes, that and you. I never forgot it. No, <laughs> no, quite. Oh, gosh. Corinne, did you... Uh, I married Isabel in 1981, and yes. I sent you uh, an invitation. Uh, Oh yes, and I well, did not get no. heard of it. It must have. 1981. Oh, we were in Sudan well, then. Yes, that was before we got back from Sudan. Yes. A mail. Let us get off very lengthily delayed. In mm. Sudan, particularly. Yes, we went to Sudan because um, um, John had a job <laughs> as a. Um, what was it? <laughs> you had to oversee it's, the... It's, a, it's um, too long ago to remember the basic facts clearly. <laughs> How long did you stay in Sudan? I was there for, for nearly two and a half years. Oh. Corinne came out for a year, but she found it hard going because of the, so the harshness of the climate. Mm. It was... Oh, because of the hair dryer heat. It was unbelievably... Heat. Unbelievably hot. You can't imagine when I got your letter. It was uh, for me. It was my Christmas day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a miracle, really, yes, wasn't yes, it? Wasn't. Yes. And and the, the, the fact that we didn't receive your wedding invitation, which was, it probably is still in Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> you will get it. In 20 years. Yes, we may Why do. not? Yes. <laughs> when I'm pushing up the daisies. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, well, we had a letter from another French student, but uh, unfortunately he didn't put his own address at the top of the letter, so we weren't able to reply to it. He well, that's a very bad fault with the French. That well, they I don't put their address on the on the letter. Yes. They, No, he's still this, uh, essentially the same Philippe, and he was, uh, of course, instantly recognisable when he arrived on the doorstep to uh, see us again after such a, uh, a lapse of time. It's amazing, he has not changed a lot. He's fuller in the face, he has expanded a little. <laughs> not as much as I have, though. <laughs> I would have recognised him. If he'd been, if I'd been walking down the street and seen him, I'd have thought that's Philippe. Yes. Let me show my uh, our wedding with Isabel. Oh, that's your wife. Oh, she's sweet. Yes. Why you we look so young? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was that's twenty. I can't you don't look 20. any different from when you were with us there. Yeah.
Oh, you are so young. How we? Oh. You did not change. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you brought your camera with you. <laughs> that is traditional in England. Do you do you have this in France? No, no. Well, you you have a cracker oh, wait a and you pull it. This is a picture of my three boys. Oh, they're good lookers. And a funny one, this one. <laughs> they have backs too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How do you think Worthing compares with Teddington? It's different, isn't it? Yes, it's, uh, Worthing is very nice because you have seafront, you have that beach. Right. Yes, uh, it, mm. it, it's a very long promenade indeed. We love it here because the air is so good. Mm. It is, and we call it sunny Worthing because we seem to have more sunshine here than most places. I will come back to England to visit my friend John and Corinne and uh, to visit Dr. Foden. Later, maybe, uh, I will try to go further with this test. I need uh, time and need money to go to travel, to go to Poland. I have a surgery, so at first my surgery, my patient, and wait and see. But I, I don't give up. His great-great-grandfather's tools and the four teeth will be safely locked away to be passed down to his children and to future generations.